Hello and welcome to this video. So now we have our simulation done, the next step would be to move everything into a script so we can test out lots of different pairs and not just the US dollar Japanese yen. However, you'll have noticed, and I've bemoaned it a couple of times during the series, that we keep having to use this code to convert these string values into numeric and we're also converting the times into a time rather than leaving them as a string. Now ideally, we'd actually save this data directly using the collect his data already with the values converted. It's a bit silly just to leave them in the files as strings. And in fact, going even further back from there, I think it would be quite good inside the Oanda API to actually have a bit of functionality that simply gives us directly a data frame when we fetch the candles. And that's what we're going to do in this video. So inside the oanda underscore API dot pi, underneath the fetch candles function, we're going to write a new function. And I'm going to type at the class method and then def candles to df cls json data. So this function will take in the json data that we get from our candles response in the fetch candles function. We'll come to that in a minute. So then inside collect hist data, I want to copy all of the code inside this get candles data frame, go back into our under API and just paste it and make sure everything is tabbed across correctly. And I want to make a couple of changes. The first one is we're already going to receive our JSON data as the response and then the candles inside there. So we'll replace this with JSON data. And then here's the critical part. So where we have the candle price and OH, we're going to type float and surround that in brackets. So it's converted directly to a number when it's loaded. The next thing we're going to do is instead of return PD data frame, we're going to see DF is equal to PD data frame. And then we're going to say df time is equal to pass x for x in df.time. And then at the top of the file in oanda.py, we of course need to import the date util parser so we can actually use that pass function. And now we've got the strings as a, a number here, and we've also got the time now as an actual date. We can return the data frame from the function. So you have now a class method on the Oanda API class. I'm not sure if it completely belongs there, but it's okay. But we can use this method then to convert any amount of data from response to a data frame that actually has numbers and the, the time types rather than the strings. Now we have to make a couple of adjustments to this fetch candles function here so that we can make use of the data frame. So at the top of fetch candles, we're going to make a new argument and call that as df and set it to false as a default value. That means if we call this function without this argument specified, then it will be specified as false by default. And we're going to use this to tell this function whether to return a data frame or just return the response from the API. So down inside the function here then, just below this uh, response status code 200, I'm going to add some code. I'm going to say if as data frame is equal to true, then JSON data is equal to response.json square brackets and candles. And then we'll return our response.status code and oanderapi.candles to df json data. Otherwise, we'll just return as we did before, which is the non data frame version. And down in the bottom of the Oanda API where we did some testing, we're just going to test out that everything's working. So I'm going to say here that our data frame is equal to api.fetch candles. And then on the end here, we'll put as df is equal to true. And then I'd like to just print df.info. Oh, and of course I need to collect the status code there as well. So now we can bring up the console and I'll just run Python O under API. And we can see here that we've got a data frame with 117 entries. And more crucially, we can see now that the time is no longer an object, it's a date time. And now we're getting back all of the parts, the prices that we want to the data frame as floats, which is good. So the next change, now that that's complete, is to go into collect hist data and we can make some adjustments inside here. So we can remove this get candles data frame function that we had inside there because we don't need it anymore. And now inside the create file function, where we're fetching the candles, we can add as data frame is equal to true. And now we have to change the logic just a little bit down here. So first of all, we're receiving a data frame back rather than our JSON data. And then we can say that if df is not none, and df.empty is equal to false. So that means that we have a response and we have at least one row inside the data frame. And that means then that we can append this data frame to our candle data frames. That means then we can delete this line here because we don't need it anymore. And that means we can still print the error out if we have uh, not equal to 200 because something went wrong. The rest of the code in the file then can stay exactly the same. Now what that will mean is for the following videos you'll need to rerun your history data collection so that we update all of the data frames to actually have these numerical values rather than the strings. 
But what that's done is made our lives or your life in the future when you maybe use this script for other things a little bit easier to actually have all the data types uh, sorted out in the data frames that we load. So thanks very much for watching and comments, questions, welcome as always below the video. See you in the next one.